Good afternoon and welcome to the Ascendo Traders Group. This is our weekend wrapper report for May 25th, 2008. AscendoTraders.com, effective trade plans delivered daily. And obviously, we want to go ahead and take the time to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. We want to thank our veterans and our armed forces for protecting us and allowing us to do what we do. So we obviously are indebted to them and we want to show our appreciation for all that they do for our country. So happy Memorial Day and thanks for our troops. So this week was, well, it was bad. <laughs> uh, the Dow was down, S&P's down, and NASDAQ's down. Um, as we've been talking about really for the past two weeks is that the market was pausing at the 200 um, exponential move moving average. We were sort of magnet. We were attracted to it, and we were hovering there. We were breaking it and coming back and breaking and coming back. But eventually, um, you know, that test of the 200 moving average failed, and we started to pull back. We failed our new highs. Um, a lot of that was based upon the soaring oil prices. Um, some concerns came in, again, about the uh, financial sector. And remember, we've been talking about that. If we really want to see the market take off, we need to see the brokers, we need to see the banks start to really move. They were going sideways. And so uh, without that leadership, we uh, started to fall back. And there's also some concerns about the inflation data. So this thing, home sales fell um, in April, but the big thing that really was the catalyst for pushing us down was the release of the minutes for the FMC policy, where they um, raised concerns about inflation and lowered the guidance for uh, the GDP growth. Obviously, they also talked about the, the cutting was going to be unlikely, but we expected that, but the language change was really what sent the market down. Um, obviously, the market's closed on Monday, Memorial Day. Uh, we have consumer conference and new home sales on Tuesday. Um, initial claims and uh, crude oil on Thursday. We've got some um, core inflation data also coming out this week. So um, tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, we have consumer confidence. We don't really have any earnings as we're winding down in this quarter of earnings releases. So we don't really have anything on earnings. And then we have our split plays that we have been watching. So let's go ahead and take our flag list. And we're also going ahead and take a look at the... Um, sector rotation was going on there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a rest, look at our sectors. And the theme of the day is we're going to have a lot of stocks that by definition are bullish. But again, obviously, we want to be cautious and we want to see where the market is going to go. We want to see if the market is going to bounce here at support or are we going to continue to go lower. Um, and if you remember last week, we only had one, maybe two casinos, hotels, or maybe the only bear sector. And um, this week, we're going to have a we're kind of 50-50. So let's take a look. So hotels, you can see kind of we broke lower, and then we came back up. So I'm going to pass on hotels. Basic materials is one of these stocks that, by definition, is bullish. Um, still up here at the 5 and the 10 moving average, which is good. But we've got a falling three pattern here. Got some wicks here, so we want to see this one bounce, but we'll put that in the bullish category. Utilities, what I like about utilities, it makes a higher high, consolidates, makes a higher high, consolidates, makes a higher high. Probably going to consolidate, if not go lower, so we're going to pass in utilities for right now. Builders, um, love the higher highs, but look at this gap down, break it below the 50. So the builders are definitely going to be in the bearish categories because of this. Not only the gap down, but we're below the 50 now. Casinos, uh, during here we had that upgrade of the sector and now we've got back down back to where we normally are. So casinos are definitely going to be on my bearish side again. You can see that we're at a key support level. Coal, by definition, still bullish, but you can see we got a triple wicks up here. A little concerned about that. Look at this doji with all this wicks. So there's definitely some indecision going on in the coal sector. Banks. Remember we said for the S&P to really start taking off, we need the banks and the brokers to take off. Well, they didn't. They fell back, and now we're making a falling three at a key support level here. So banks are going to go into the uh, the bearish category. Biotech in a consolidation mess, but look closely. You can see we've got a falling three about to break out of this consolidation. I think that'll be key, and if we break out, we could break hard. So this is going to go in the, uh, the bearish category. Uh, we'll get to the indexes uh, in a moment. You can see drugs in a consolidation mess here. Not really going to mess with those. Internet stocks, uh, by definition, bullish. Uh, but look at this <laughs> retracement. 
Uh, we did get a nice little hammer bounce off the 20 here. So that's good. You can see we closed just below this uptrend line. So by definition, bullish, but we need to be cautious. Gold, um, like gold, we, we've been kind of in a, a rectangle here also. We'll see that when we look at the AEM's chart. Um, but we're still also up at the 5 and the 10. We got almost made a higher, made a higher high in this level, but we need to break this 202 level to really confirm this bullishness. So gold's going to be on the bullish category for now. Um, software, same thing here. Got a fall in three pattern. Not as directly down as the internet sector. You can see the internet just fell straight down, whereas software, at least we had a bounce in there. So by definition, still bullish when you're there. Bounce. Bounce. So we want to see if we're going to bounce or we're going to continue to fall. Insurance. Yeah, you guys know we've been in, yeah, on insurance for a while now. Um, oil services, by definition. Oh, the key thing about insurance is, though, is, is look, that it's making a falling three at support. Oil services, by definition, bullish. Retail, showing some weakness. If we break here, I think we're definitely going to be bearish. Socks. As a Nasdaq's been leading the market, the Sox has been leading the market, and now we made a falling three and a hammer at the 20. So hopefully you can see the wick here pushes down. Maybe the the wick here will push us higher. Hopefully we will get a bounce. Transports finally showing some weakness, weaker than internet's there, and because we're below the 50, I'm gonna go bearish on transports, brokers, key support level bearish, natural gas by definition bullish, and oil bullish. Okay, and now we're ready to begin the education portion of our video. We're using the book Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, The Lore of Trading. And when we last met, we were talking about how we need rules, a trade plan, a system, and boundaries to guide our behavior as we interact with the market. Um, the simple fact is that there's a enormous potential to wipe out your whole account on one trade. I can remember when I first started out and... Um, going to these seminars and everything and everybody said you know you gotta practice trade for six months well, practice trade what <laughs> what's that <laughs> i want to make money and i ignored that and just started trading and and you know if there were times i was successful making a couple hundred dollars there a thousand dollars there but then uh, it was routinely because i had no trade plan because i had no idea why i was trading what i was what my goals were what my indicators were i i knew what indicators were but i was really just winging it intraday it was it was clockwork that la 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 five hundred two hundred thousand dollars lose five thousand dollars five hundred five hundred lose six thousand dollars like wait you know it was one step forward three steps backwards four steps forward ten steps backwards you know and and it's because it's hard to replicate your winning trades if you don't know why it was a winning trade if you don't know what made this uh something that we want to replicate, something that uh, made sense. And we can't figure out why we traded it. We can't replicate it and be consistent, successful traders. Um, he go, Mark Douglas goes on to say that the market provides, provides structure in the form of behavior patterns that indicate when an opportunity to buy or sell exists. Again, the market is just data. And we as traders place meaning on the data based upon our background knowledge and our prior experience. Um, we identify the behavior patterns. We identify chart patterns by, look, by looking at this data and saying, okay, this looks like a rising three, this looks like a falling three. Again, the market says data. It's just a stream of information. There's no beginning or end. There's no middle. There's no rule that says the market has to open here and close there. It's just data. And we as traders place meaning upon that based upon what we know about the market, how we interact with the market. So what we have to do is have rules, have boundaries, have a system so that when we see t ticks, we see data, we can interact with that and make predictions. And again, not be mad when it doesn't work out because again, nothing is guaranteed. But we make adjustments to our systems and then we continue to trade and we don't allow ourselves to get frustrated and let our emotions uh, get the better of us. So the next time we're going to talk about the comparison between um, gambling and the stock market. Um, this uh, Because it's a weekend wrap report, you know we have a couple segments that are not on the YouTube version. The commentary where we list what people like the Shadow Trader and Dave Elliott and the McHugh Report. So you might want to download the podcast version just to get the full uh, 
version of the video. Um, as always, we appreciate those people who are providing us feedback here at the podcastfeedback.html. And visit my blog. Um, today I'll be uploading a, a great article by Dean Callahan. He wrote a great article on why every trader needs to have a trade plan. It's excellent. Um, I was just so blown away. We had some conversations, and he just wrote an excellent, excellent article. I recommend everybody go check that out, why every trader needs to have a trade plan. Um, and then we can go back to how we can develop one. But just, again, a great article on why we each need to have one. As always, trade your own risk, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Happy Memorial Day, and thanks to our veterans.